Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. Uh, Mishmash Monday. Today we got something a little bit different. A little lathe instruction, so let's get right okay, to it. Okay, first up, a good friend of the show by the name of Alex Schoenberg. Uh, he's going to be getting a lathe or uh, soon, and he... Um, he wanted to, uh, to do some practice sessions on the lathe. And one of the things that uh, he brought up, he's going to be turning some brass and stuff. Brass can be a little bit tricky because of the copper content. You know, it can tend to grab tools. But uh, anybody that's interested in getting a lathe, uh, and which is a lot of you are, um, I just want to give you a couple quick tips on something that I found to really help out. And it was cheap and economical and, and just fun. So... Let's now, get to what it. we're going to be talking about today is uh, basically the metal lathe. And just because it's called a metal lathe doesn't mean that's the only thing it can turn. It can turn uh, a variety of different materials. Same with a wood lathe, can turn a variety of different materials. But uh, what we're going to try out today is a uh, PVC, a piece of PVC pipe, uh, polyvinyl chloride. You can get this in any hardware store. I think this is inch and a quarter. But we're going to cut off two small sections. And let me show you good practice. It's something to do uh, when you first get a lathe. Now, whenever you do a fast cut on PVC, you're going to have some, you see this residual, you know, this uh, burr that comes on. So what you're going to do is you take your utility knife and just run it across the edge, the outside edge like this, and that'll take care of that. And you can also do the inside, but one way I found to do the inside really nice and easy to get a nice finish on there is to use one of these hand countersinks. This is for smaller, but I, I get these, you buy these at the, you see these all the time at the flea market or something. These are old reamers and things like that. And all you do is you just chuck it up into the vise like this. Just give it a, a nice, and then uh, all you do is take the uh, PVC, uh, the one we just did here, that's got the little bit of out, and you just put on here and just give it a couple turns. And look how nice that makes the inside. It burr free on the inside. And again, I'll show you how that works. You just take it here, put it in the vise, and you know, it's meant to go into a uh, an old fashioned uh, brace, you know, the drill that, uh, but look at that. It works so good for this and it gives you such a nice smooth part. But then we're gonna just take care of, again, the outside, you gotta get rid of the outside, but uh, always deburr your parts as good as you can before you even put them in the lathe. And we're gonna take care of this on the lathe, but this is just so it seats better. Now, if you're new to this, you're going to see that the jaws on the lathe are kind of a marvel of engineering. And you can see uh, there's usually two sets of jaws that come with the uh, lathe, and or with the chuck, rather. And uh, this one here is called the standard jaws. That uh, It's a three-jaw chuck, because you can count one, two, three. But this is made, this type of jaw is made to hold things mostly from like this. You see, it clamps it here. It's good to about an inch. Uh, capacity on this particular jaw. Now, what's interesting is you see these little steps on the outside. You can actually clamp uh, something from the inside out like this. You could put a, a piece of tubing over here, open it up, and it'll hold hold it from the inside. I'm not crazy about certain working with that in certain ways, so we're going to switch jaws and put on the uh, the other side jaws, and I'll show you how these are. The, like I said, this is the second set that comes with it. Now, one important thing to remember is all the jaws come marked, and you can see here, if you look at the numbers on here, you can see here there's a, a 1. It starts off with a 1 on the serial number for here. Uh, this one starts off with a 2, and this one starts off with a 3. That's the... Uh, that's the um, way that the jaws go into the chuck, they have to go into certain positions. Now, I marked it on the chuck when I first got it. Uh, you can see I put three little pin punch marks on there. That's jaw number three, two over there. That's jaw number two and jaw number one. And uh, it's very important how you put these in. Now, you take the one that says one, obviously, that goes in there. And then uh, number two will go into here. And then number three will go into here. Now, this is important because uh, when you're tightening this up, what you have to do is see it says one, two, and three. You back off the chuck, and you'll see what happens until these pop in. I'm, I'm putting pressure on each one of these jaws. Now, you back it off, and you'll that one clipped. Now, that one clipped. And then when this one clips, you see? Now, you could start 
closing it. And when you do it like that, that will make sure that the jaws all line up perfectly. You have to make sure the threads engage this one first and this, and that's how you do it. Now you can see with these jaws, because of the configuration, they can hold wider objects like here here's a big piece that you know if i want to put in here i could put that in there and hold it from the outside because it grips there now with the piece we're going to be working on today we'll put it into uh into the middle one here right there and that's how we'll hold this one here so it, they're very interesting and in, and in how jaws work on a lathe. now the first exercise you're going to do is called facing this is done on every every operation basically you want to do and you'll see me do it a lot of times and basically you got to make this perpendicular flat to this you want a perfect right angle it's obviously we cut it with a saw so it's not going to be you know straight and you could see when we'll turn the lathe on you'll see it wobble a little you can see it's not perfectly straight and that's what we're going to do now is straighten it out. Okay, now we got this nice and straight and it's parallel, it's uh, perpendicular to the side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this out and reverse it because we got to do the other side. Now because this is nice and straight over here, we can push this in against the uh, the back of the jaws here and that'll basically give us a straight run. And now we're going to straighten this up. I'm sure it's going to be a little bit off. And then we'll have two sides that are square and faced. Okay, now we squared off the sides. We have a perfectly squared off faced uh, part. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one here. We're just going to straighten up the sides and make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's parallel. Now for this operation, what we're going to use is, uh, typically you would use what's called a boring bar. Anytime you're trying to go into a, a hole or something, use, uh, this is called a boring bar and that's, uh, goes onto your, uh, lathe like this and you can see how when that goes on, you can see it goes into the uh, the tube. Just gonna go in there about the half the thickness of whatever this PVC pipe is, and we're gonna make a uh, a little ledge in there, and, and I'll show you why this is a, a good practice thing, but this is good to, uh, because you don't need any lubricant, you have to worry about grabbing. Plastic is really good for this, so let's see what we're gonna do. Okay, so you see what we made here. Basically, all we did was uh, we cut out the inside here. See that? And uh, I made a nice little uh, shoulder. Now what we're going to do is cut the outside of this so it slips, fits in here, and that'll be our exercise. The first thing we want to do is we want to make the shoulder to the right length so it bottoms out on that ledge in there. So uh, to do that, we take any depth gauge like this and uh, just push it down to here. And that's the depth gauge we'll read on the other side and just scribe it over on the uh, other piece. Okay, now here's the fun part. Now, again, uh, depending on where your skill level is, you can measure this and try and take this down with calipers or something. Or we're just going to take a little bit off and then since we have this piece, we can try and snug fit it on. So we're going to take a little bit off at a time. And this is, like I said, where it gets the fun because uh, this is all practice and it will get you better at the lathe. And without uh, dealing with some expensive or hard to work with metal. Now, when you start getting close, a pair of uh, inexpensive inside, cal this is inside calipers, and you can see here, you put them in so they just give a nice, uh, just a, a, a fit that, you know, a sliding fit, and then you take your outside calipers, and you match it up to here like this. You could see it's just about the same size, and then you could turn this down until this slips over, and that's how you'll know you're very close to the size. Okay, here's where it starts getting fun. Now you're getting close to the, uh, you can see we're close here to the inside of uh, this diameter. And you can see, look, we got it that it, we could press fit it on. So now you have to decide 
what kind of fit do you want? Do you want a press fit, a slide fit, a snug fit? And we're only talking a couple thousand. Remember, you take a thousand off here, it's taking another, it's it's doubled. So you have to think about what you want to do or how tight of a fit you want. So uh, let's figure that out. We want a nice fit, but nothing too crazy. Okay, this is called taking a whisker of a cut. Okay, now uh, here's our test fit here. Got it down nice. Nice fit, right? Look, at nice tight seam here. Now that the key is the inside. See the inside? There's no visible seam there, so that means we're butting up again. So we did a very good job on this. This is a great practice session for anybody that's got a uh, new metal lathe and uh, a fun way to make little boxes or uh, you could do this with any kind of material. Once you do it with plastic, you can do it with uh, aluminum, brass, anything. So hope this helps. Now here's a project I made uh, years ago when I was uh, doing some experimenting with the lathe. And this is from a piece of Delrin. You know Delrin is a... Uh, very high density, a superior plastic. It's really a great product to work with. It's thermally stable. It's uh, super strong, uh, easily machinable, just a great stuff. But here's a, a little case I made. And again, if you notice here, it, it don't open, you know, and you can see it kind of almost pulls back, you know, on its own. And that's because I made this into, listen to this. You hear that fit? Now, if I try and push this together, it's almost like I have to spin it because it's almost an airtight fit, you know. And this is one of the things you practice with and just a, a, a great material and a lot of fun and good practice on the lathe. So start with plastic, then you could do this in aluminum and brass and things like that. But Delrin is so cool, isn't it? And look at that. Look at that finish. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, I tried this out in the, in the cold, and it's uh, it works just the same. Really great plate. Okay, really next cool. up on the Mosh, I have a really good channel for you to check out. A good friend of mine. Uh, I've been to subscribe to him for years. Uh, Randy Richard in the shop. I'm sure some of you already are subscribed. Uh, Randy is a... Uh, He's a former uh, marine engineer. He was one of those guys, the troubleshooter guys. They would put on the big ships like the oil tankers and stuff. And and um, anybody that knows if you've ever been uh, aboard a ship or something, they always have a guy there, the troubleshooter. Because when you're out on the ocean, if something goes wrong, you need somebody that can fix it. And uh, that was Randy. And uh, Randy does uh, all kinds of projects in his shop. And if you can just go to his channel, go to the video section and look, scroll down the videos, you're going to see it. At least at least a dozen videos that you're gonna to want to watch right away I mean uh, he has so many great such great content but what's really cool is um, he recently sent me something I want to show you that's uh, really so interesting. a couple weeks ago I get a package in the mail and in it is uh, Randy sent a couple of his stickers which is a, always a treat and and look at this this is a uh, one of the tags he does for when he marks his work he has uh, an engraved tag that uh, says Randy Richard in the shop and uh but this is what he sent how great is this if you've never seen this before on his shop he makes a lot of tools and um you can buy these from his uh, channel he has all different types of uh scribes and dovetail cutters and he's a, he basically does tool making as a hobby and he makes a high quality really nice stuff and and look at this it's all engraved he engraved it with my name scout crafter and also randy richard in the shop usa so uh and that's his uh, insignia, the one R straight, one R backwards. Can you see that there? It's really interesting. And look at this. Here's the cool part. Um, it's hexagonal brass and uh, really nicely made. Beautiful tool. Carbide scribe. If you've never seen how a scribe is used, uh, you need a good scribe. It's really important, especially one that fits nice in the hand and uh, and has a really sharp point. And I'll show you how now, this real is Real quickly, when you want to uh, mark out a, something and drill a hole in metal, we use what's called layout fluid and layout fluid is basically it's like the ink that's in a magic mark it has a brush in the cap and what you do it dries very quick and uh they usually come in blue but of course i like the steel red the dicom red and you mark it isn't that a nice color you mark it on there like that and uh then what you do is you take your layout line now let's say i wanted to drill a hole in the middle there i would measure this out i'm not doing it now but you take your scribe here and you would mark 
a line down that way. Now you see how that line stands out, how sharp and, and nice that line is? That's because you're using a, a good uh, sharp scribe. And again, you would do it the other way like this. And if I wanted to drill a hole right there, those intersecting marks, that's where you could see. Now, it's uh, the reason you have to do it with metal, you know, wood, you don't have to be so accurate, but with metal, you have to be very accurate. Now, you see how sharp and nice those lines are, but let me show you another really cool part of what the scribe okay, does. Okay, we're over at the milling machine. This could be a drill press. Either way, I don't have a DRO, a digital readout. Now, if I wanted to get accurately and drill right in the middle of that crosshair, I can put the scribe, Randy scribe, because it's a hexagonal scribe, I could put it right in my drill press and line up the hole. Let me show you how Now, the works. first thing you would do is uh, stand behind the line, the one line here, bring the... Uh, the scribe down very close to the lines like this and then you would move your your table from left to right until you line it up so here we are we're going to move it over to the right a little bit so we get that one line lined up and then we'll go to the other side now we went 90 degrees and we're going to use the uh forward back and we'll line that line up until we are perfect and then we'll bring this down and that'll take us right right in the middle of that line and that's how we could use a scribe as a poor man's digital Then all reader. you do is just bring down and make sure that that point touches exactly in the middle of those crosshairs which it does and then you take the scribe out put in your drill bit and you're ready now to go. when you're finished with all your layout work just in case you didn't know uh, you take a little bit of acetone and uh, that'll wipe this layout die right off you could see here it comes off one two three and uh, and this way everything's nice and clean, your parts nice and clean. So acetone takes it right off. And uh, that's that's why the layout fluid is so popular. Well, the great feature of Randy Scribe is, you know, there's my normal, my normal scribe. They will always find their way to roll off your table and fall usually point first onto the floor, no matter when you put, place it down. But, you know, because it's a hex design, Randy's uh, scribe stays put no matter where you put it. So... Really thought out, well thought out, and beautiful tool. Thanks so much, Randy. Really appreciate it. And if you haven't seen his channel, you don't already subscribe, go by there. Uh, check out his video selection, and I'm sure you'll find something so in interesting. closing, thanks very much for tuning in today. We did have a, uh, a lot going on this mosh, so make sure you check out Randy's channel. I think you'll enjoy it. And thanks very much for tuning in. Have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.